Hello ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the Brother Rice Crusaders take on the Fenwick Friars in tonight's rugby matchup. I'm Gavin Flynn, joined by my co-commentator Emmett Ashley. Yes, yeah, tonight we've got a beautiful matchup um, from the Fenwick Friars against the Brother Rice Crusaders. Looks like Fenwick set off to kick and they're about to start right now. Brother Rice comes up with the ball. In the middle of a, a ruck right now. Looks like there's a penalty. Looks like Fenwick's back time. I think there was a knock call there. Rice is taking it out to the back line. Good offload there. Rice is getting it out to the edge. They've got room. Rice is trying to ruck over. Hogan passes it to 10. Hogan clears the ball to Desmond. Desmond takes it in, still running. Mark Green taking the ball in. He goes down, Hogan passes the ball to Desmond. Desmond out to number 12, Gannon. Looks like there's a call. Fenwick's going to be back 10 meters. More confusion on the field currently. I'm not too sure what's going on. And Hogan passes the ball up. Hogan out to Desmond again. To Gannon. Looks like he's got some room. He's in the try zone. He places it. Try Brother Rice. Looks like it was um, Gannon there, the number 12 position. He had a pretty good run. It was a good rush by the Crusaders. Yep. They were just trying to work the field back and forth, I think. They just went from sideline to sideline, trying to take advantage of all the space that I had. Going, going from the back line, not too much forward play there. We weren't wasting any time trying to get an early lead on these guys. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what uh, what Rice likes to do now, because they're actually going to return the kick now that now that they scored. So we'll see if we'll we'll see if they can convert again. Number twelve kicking, kick is up. It is no good. We are at five minute. We are at five to nothing, brother Rice, with thirty two minutes to go. Fenwick comes up to set up the kick here. Kick is up. Looks like Mark Green is going to be the returner here. He takes it up. Brought down by a host of Friars. Hogan passes out to Podlasek. He's still going. It's taking a little bit for him to go down. He's still up. Crusaders clear the ball. Out to Desmond, out to out to Gannon. Gannon kicks. Looks like that's going to be out of bounds off Fenwick, I believe. I'm sorry, off Brother Rice. Look like looks like it's going to be Fenwick's line out. So right now there's a line out that is when the ball goes out of bounds and the inbounder actually throws the ball up to the um, people in the play who are going to be lifted up and they're going to try and receive the pass. Looks like Rice gets it. Rice places the ball back. Hogan out to Desmond. Out to 12, out to 13. He breaks through the line once again. He's just got the fullback to beat. He gets taken down. Offload to Gannon. Gannon goes down. Fenwick is back 10 once again. Looks like there's more confusion out on the field. Looks like Fenwick had the call, actually. So 
So after this penalty, it looks like they're going to bind up and have a scrum here to Fenwick's position. So Fenwick is just going to roll the ball in between the middle of them, and they're going to have to try and um, push each other and gain access to the ball and just kick it back to their number nine, their fly half position, or their scrum half position, I'm sorry. Fenwick's 10 takes the ball up, gets stopped. He's still on, he's still on his feet. He's taken down. Nine passes out to the 13. There's a kick by Fenwick there. Looks like there's a call on the field. Looks like it's going to be Fenwick's advantage. And it appears that they're going to run pods, which right here they're just going to get four big guys and they're going to decide to just run right into the Rice defenders and see if they can gain any yards. Good tackle there by Podlasek. Fenwick's eight man takes it the ball, gets brought down. Their ten passes it out to the five to the nine. Fenwick passes it out again and knocks it. I believe that's gonna be a Fenwick ball. Brother Rice looking to be a little more aggressive in this game. How do you think that'll uh, play out for them in the future? Um, you know, I think Rice is just trying to hammer them. They're just trying to use the space that they have on the field and work wide, not not so like hammering it in their throat. They're just going to try and play faster than them. I think that's their overall game plan. Whereas Fenwick, we saw them with the pods. They're going to try and use their big guys most. And Rice is just going to try and run around them. Looks like there's a call on the field. Threw the it's, ball forward, it appears. Yep. So it's going to be uh, Fenwick's ball for a scrum, another scrum since it was a penalty on Rice. Fenwick is going to be rolling the ball in. They're going to try and pass that back out to their back line once they roll it in. Ball went straight on in the scrum. So, since the ball did not actually enter the scrum, one of the one of the players actually just kicked it out once they tried to throw it in. So they're just gonna have another re scrum. The nine rolls it in. The eight man picks it and goes. Looks like Mark Green brings him down in the play. Fenwick trying to reset with their. Back line. Big man takes it up. Gets brought down by the Crusaders. Rice has a pretty good tackle on their number 11 position. Looks like another penalty on the Crusaders. I'm sorry, on Fenwick. So Rice is going to get a 10 meter advantage. Which means that they have ten yards to do whatever they want with the ball, and the and the Fenwick Friars cannot contest that. So what most teams like to do is kick the ball out of bounds because they will actually get the ball where it goes out of bounds. So that's what Brian Gannon just did, and they're gonna get the ball right around the right around Rice's twenty-seven. It appears to me that Rice seems to be faster and stronger than the Fenwick Friars. Yeah, I'm seeing I'm seeing um, some physical mismatches out there. It looks like Mark Green is just pretty much overpowering the Fenwick Friars, and we've got lots of strength at Brother Ice. Line out is unsuccessful. However, Hogan brings up the ball. Looks like he's still up. Fenwick strips the ball actually. Number one for the Friars takes it up. He's still on his feet. Fenwick gets it out to their back line. Good tackle there by the 13. He gets the ball off though. Fenwick trying to reset once again after a tackle. They're trying to get the ball out but don't get much. Number nine trying to find the ball through that ruck. He gets the ball out to the 13, out to the 15. The 15 decides to take it up. He's got some room. 
Looks like he broke through the defensive line. He's going to place it down for a try. So right there, I think um, Fenwick just showed off what, that, what they were trying to do all along. They just powered it through the line, and, and they didn't try to do anything fancy on the outside edge. They just tried to power it through. And they appeared uh, to be like a defensive breakdown for the Crusaders there, getting burned on the outside. Yeah, wh I think what it was is um, they came up at different speeds. So it caused a natural gap in the defensive line, which is not a very good thing because th they can just break through that. Yeah, Fenwick found the hole, and they hit it hard. Yes. So now uh, Fenwick's number 15 is going to be kicking the ball for the PAT attempt. He lines up, gets set. Kick is up. And the kick is good. Brother Ice 5, Fenwick Friars 7. 24 minutes remaining. So Gannon kicks it back off to the Fenwick Friars because, as I've previously said, the scoring team actually receives the ball again. So that can actually turn into a vicious cycle of just scoring over and over again. So we'll see if Fenwick can execute that or if Rice is going to get the ball back here. Looks like there's a call. We'll see what it is shortly. Back 10 on the Crusaders, I'm not sure what the call was. Looks like Fenwick Friars are going to try and use their big guys here. Number 4 goes in and is met by a host of Crusaders at the, at the defensive line. Number 9 passes out to their 10. Looks like there's a drop ball that's going to roll out of bounds. I believe that's going to be the Crusaders line out right around the 15 of Fenwick's territory. So with this good f field positioning, Gavin, what do you think the Crusaders are going to try and do? Do you think they're going to try and use their big man up front, or do you think they're going to try and kick it out to the outside and, and beat him with a f trying to be fast? I think the Crusaders are going to use their big man because it looks right now like the strength is working. They're able to get, get through the Fenwick Friars, no problem with their big man. Yeah. Tim Des or I'm sorry, um Desmond brings up the ball, gets tackled right at the line. Rice takes up the ball, Podlasek with the ball. He he's still on his feet, but he's met by some Friars. Looks like Fenwick is gonna be back another ten meters to Rice's ad advantage. Gannon brings up the ball, passes it, it's knocked down into Tavrides' hands. Knocked by Fenwick. Looks like there's a lot of anger out here at Tom Mitchell Field. <laughs> Not sure what's going on at the field, but some people seem to be upset by the officials' call. Looks like it's going to be a scrum right at the 10-meter line. To Rice's advantage, which means that Rice's um, scrum half will be rolling the ball into the scrum which works in their favor. Rice gets it back. Hogan passes out to Desmond. Desmond to Gannon to the thir to the 13 who breaks through. He places it down and he's going to score a try. That's going to run the score back up to 10-7 Crusaders. We'll see if they can get, convert this kick. So so Gavin, after seeing those um fast men run up the field, do you think that they're going to try and stick with that strategy once they get the ball here? Do you think they're going to try and uh, try something different, maybe kick the ball around or, or use their big men more? It appears to me that right now they're using their big men to get further down the field, and then when they get close, they use their fast men to get into the try zone, and I think that's going to work out great for them in this game. We'll see how that plays out in the long run. Right now, Rice is set up to kick. It is up. And it is good. So that leaves us with 12-7, 20 minutes remaining.
Brother Rice Crusaders are in the lead. Comes offload to Gannon. He, he drops the ball, however. It's going to be Fenwick's ball. Looks like there's a whistle on the field. Play is going to be stopped for sh shortly. As the officials trying to sort things out. Looks like it's going to be Fenwick's scrum. Fenwick's back line is ready to get this ball. Let's see what they do here. Ball has entered the scrum. Looks like the eight man picks and goes. He's just going to pick up the ball and run with it and hope for the best. He gets brought down at the Crusader line. However, the 10 takes the ball out, passes it out. 15 gets in and gets met by strong tackle from the Crusaders. Looks like there's more confusion on the field with another penalty. Looks like it's going to be Rice's scrum right around the 37-yard line. Hogan's going to Hogan's going to be run, rolling the ball in. We'll see if they do another eight-man pick like the Friars. Nope, they're going to give it out to their backs. And Tommy Conlon kicks the ball. Fenwick Friars number 15 takes up the ball. He kicks it again, but it's deflected off of number 11 for the Crusaders. That's going to be out of bounds right around the 40-yard line. So, Gavin, looks like we're seeing a lot more kicking. And from what you've seen, do you think that that's going to play out, or do you think that they should stick to what they've doing, what they have been doing best, which is the big man play? Right now, I think the big man play is working. I think they should keep keep going until it starts to fail. But uh, I don't want to discredit the coaches because they might have something up their sleeve, something ready for this game. Okay. If it ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what you might say. Exactly. <laughs> looks like. Desmond with the ball goes down but offloads to the 13 position. He's going to bring it up. Mark Green with the ball along the sideline. He goes into contact. Looks like he's still on his feet. He's still going. He gets brought down, however. Hogan passes out to Desmond. Desmond to Gannon. Gannon passes it off. Crusader goes in. He gets tackled. Looks like Rice broke through the de defensive line. They're going to score here. It's going to be another try for the Crusaders. So it's going to be 17-7, to Brother Rice Crusaders. We'll see if they can convert this kick for another two points. Whatever you. Rice gets set to kick. It's up and it is good. So it's going to be 19 to seven, Brother Rice Crusaders, with 16 minutes remaining. Fenwick gets set to kick right around the 50-yard line. Tommy Conlon back deep to receive for the Crusaders. Looks like it's going to be a high and short kick. Crusaders receive it, met by a Fenwick Friar immediately. Hogan trying to get the ball out. He passes it out. Crusader brings it up. Brought down right around the 39. It appears that Dan Lanane is holding his shoulder out on the field. Yeah, I, I, I actually saw Dan Lanane injure his shoulder last year during a rugby during a rugby game. He actually dislocated it. It was pretty bad looking actually. We'll see if we'll see if his shoulder is that bad this year too. 
Looks like he got subbed out as he's getting looked at on the sideline. Let's hope for the best recovery of him. So Fenwick is going to kick the ball out of bounds. They're going to get a line out. So they're going to be throwing the ball back inbounds to their jumping players. Fenwick throws in the line out. Fenwick receives the ball. Taking it out to their back guys. Ooh, major, major tackle. Looks like there's going to be a whistle on the field. And it's going to be Fenwick's advantage. Rice is going to be back 10 meters again. Oh, Rice has been playing really aggressive. Uh, would you say this is an average number of penalties this early in the game, or is this you know over the top? You know, this is a little over the top in, in my experience playing rugby. There usually aren't this many penalties, but it might be that aggressive getting aggressiveness getting in their head, and they, they just are too eager. So Fenwick takes the ball up. Their ton passes it out. Looks like Fenwick Friars are going to get tackled down. They ruck over the ball, however. And pass the ball back out to their back line. More confusion on the field as Fenwick runs up the ball. Another whistle on the field. We'll see if this is yet another penalty. Looks like it will be on the Crusaders once again. Fenwick appears to be kicking and they will. So they're going to get a line out right around the 40 yard line. <clears throat> Rice is playing very aggressive, and as of right now, it's to their advantage, but do you think it could hurt them later in the game? You know, in the long run, penalties, they're, they're not going to help you out, obviously, and later on, um, the the ref might get a little more strict, and she might be handing out yellow cards, so we don't want, we, we sure, for sure don't want um, a Crusader to be taken out of the game for five minutes. That would, that would be very detrimental. Fenwick throws in the ball out to... Their 12 position, I believe. He offloads the ball to their number 6. He's brought down right around the 30-yard line. As Fenwick passes it out once again, trying to break through the defensive line. Looks like number 5 kicks it. There's going to be a whistle on the, on the field. We'll see if that's another penalty. Seems like it's a very sloppy game today. Lots of penalties on both sides. The emotions just might be getting the best of them out here. It's a Catholic League matchup. Yep. It is. They are playing this game for the Catholic League title. And they, you know, the emotions might just be getting to their heads. They might be playing a little more aggressive than, you know, the rules allow them to. Lots of passion out there. Actually, actually, an injured player coming off on the field. She, he's got a bloody nose, it appears. He's going to get fixed up by our wonderful trainer, Margie. That appears to be the second injury of this game so far. Let's hope no more, no more players from either sides go down. Rice takes the ball up. Crusaders taking the ball up. They're right around the 50-yard line. Hogan passes the ball out of Ruck to Desmond. Desmond passes it out once again to Podlasek. Podlasek goes into contact but breaks through the line. He's got one man to beat. Let's see if he can do it. He gets brought down right around the 15-yard line. Hogan passes it back out, trying to get something started again. But there will be another, another whistle on the field. Looks like there's some confusion on the field as the ref is talking to the captain for the Fenwick Friars, their number nine position. And it appears that his brother Rice's advantage, and they're going to take the ball up as they try to break through into the try zone. So, Gavin, with this field positioning, do you think they're going to try and power through with their big men, or they're, they're going to use the outside once again like we've seen them do before? I think they're going to try and use the outside. Well, actually, Brother Rice just scored a try yet, ag yet again. So it's going to be 24-7 to 7 Crusaders with 10 minutes remaining. 
We'll see if they can convert the kick again. Kick is up and it is completed. It's going to be 26 to 7. Brother Ice Crusaders with 940 remaining here at Tom Mitchell Field. Fenwick brings up the ball to kick. Rice is going to try and convert once again and get another try. Looks like Rice catches it. He's going to go into contact and fall down. Hogan passes the ball to Desmond. Looks like he's going to be a knock on Brother Rice. So there's going to be a scrum right around the 30-yard line. So every time there's a knock on the field, which is a player who is trying to catch the ball, knocking the ball forward, there's going to be a scrum to, to follow that up because that is a penalty. It looks like Daniel Nain's injury might be a little more serious than we thought as he was just talking to Margie and his dad and one of the coaches was down there with him. Yeah, it appears that he's walking off. Let's hope he isn't, though. I, I would hate for, him, for, for a Crusader to go down like that. As Desmond brings up the ball, he gets tackled and brought down. Looks like there's another whistle. As Desmond gets off the ground. Desmond took a bit of a shot there on his way down. Yeah, that was a very rough tackle. Fenwick's 15 position has the ball currently right around Brother, Brother Rice is defending 20. They're going to run pods with their big man. He passes it to their large eight man. He's going to take it up to the Crusader line, but is met at the line. And number nine passes it out to the ten, who passes it to the five, who breaks through the line shortly, but gets brought down by the Crusaders. He places the ball backward for the ten, re ten to receive. Fenwick passes it out. Crusaders fly up on defense, but are... And looks like Fenwick passes the ball back out. Number one for the Friars, taking the ball up. He breaks through slightly. He's still on his feet. He is brought down finally. Ball's out to the nine, to the 12. Back to the eight man. Eight man gets brought down by the Crusaders. So, what do you think Fenwick might have been possibly doing wrong there as... They were just going back and forth, not really gaining any yards. It just appeared that they were going sideways. What do you think would be one strategy that they could use their advantage? Maybe out of the right, maybe out of Rice's textbook. I think that maybe if they use like number one, it's very very big guy. I think if they can put him in the right spot, maybe put him somewhere near uh, Rice's little guys, he could definitely power his way through, put him upfield a little further. Yeah, maybe maybe a mismatch would do Fenwick good. So it looks like it's going to be Rice's scrum right around their own 10. Hogan's going to be rolling the ball in this time. He rolls it in, gets it back, passes it to Tommy Conlon, who's going to give it a boot. Looks like Fenwick's 15 is going to be receiving. He drops it, however. Rice almost receives it. Tommy Conlon, the kicker, actually almost receives it. Looks like it's going to be Rice's ball. Rice is scrum, I'm sorry. Hogan is going to be rolling the ball in once again, as the nine always does. As the Friars and Crusaders get set up for this scrum. Hogan put, puts the ball in. It's at the back, passes it to Gannon, who passes it out. 
to the 13, gets taken down. Hogan passes it out. Out again. Crusaders taking it up. Met at the line once again by the Fenwick Friars. Rice get the, gets the ball out again. Break through, they break through the line a little bit, but not much. Hogan gets the ball once again. Out to Gannon, who will give it a nice boot. He's going to kick it out of bounds, I, I think. Gannon kicks it out of bounds. Looks like he's going to be a line out from the place where the kick occurred. So number two for the Fenwick Friars is going to be throwing the ball in. See if Fenwick can, can lift their guy higher than Rice to receive this. Fenwick throws their man up. The ball gets back to the Friars. They get it out to their little man on the outside. Fenwick's 10 takes it into contact, contact and gets brought down. Finally passing it all around to their back to their eight man, who breaks a couple tackles and he's got some room, but he's getting held on to by the jersey. He breaks some more tackles. A great run there by by the Friars. He gets brought down right around the Crusaders' twenty. However, there we can see we can see a display of um, a mismatch there. They they gave it to their big eight man who seemed to break some tackles using his size and strength. Definitely he found he found where the little guys were and he was able to get. Upfield with no, without a problem, really. Looks like there's gonna be a whistle on the field. We'll see what the call is from the official. Looks like it's gonna be Fenwick's ball. I believe they're gonna run pods with their big men. Yes, they are. So they're gonna stack up and run into the Crusaders and hope for the best. They get brought down right around the 15, but pass it back out. Again with a big hit. Yeah, seven cuts it back inside, gains about five yards. The nine passes it out to the ten, out to the one, that big man we, we saw before. It's taking a whole host of Crusaders to bring him down. That's fine, we pass it back out. Looks like Fenwick's big number three player picks picks up the ball and just and just goes with it into the Crusaders. Looks like they're trying to utilize that size even more with number one. They're, they're even bigger, bigger men bringing up the field again. He gets stopped right before the try zone, giving it to number three, another another big forward who will try and convert. But number nine gets tackled by the Crusaders very hard. Looks like that was Gannon, as their number four tries to take it up for the Friars. Looks like there's a big pushing pile in there. We'll see. We'll see if Fenwick can gain some more yards out of this. Looks like the ball carrier is down. Number seven for the Friars tries to convert, but is stopped at the line. The Friars are trying to get it out to the outside. We'll see if they can execute that. Looks like they will, and they score a try. Looks like it's going to be 12 to 26 for the for the Crusaders' lead. Correction, looks like it's going to be 17 to 26 for the Crusaders. Another correction on my behalf that that was 12 previously stated so it's going to be 12 to 26 with the crusaders with just over a minute in in this half and then we'll have a short break at halftime looks to me like when it comes down to strength the crusaders have it but it looks like Fenwick might have an advantage on the speed as uh, they beat him on the outside there for that last try yeah, it look, looks, looks to me that Fenwick's pretty versatile as they've got big man up front and they can beat Rice out to the outside if they have to. But we'll, we'll see what happens as uh, Fenwick's number three player comes out of the game. He appears to be talking to the trainer. We hope for the best for him. As Fenwick, as Brother Rice gets set to kick, it's going to be Gannon who's, who's putting his boot on the ball. 
Kick is up. Fenwick receives it. Tommy Conlon trying to tackle. Fenwick's 14 gets brought down in the play. Looks like there's going to be a call there. It's going to be Fenwick's ball. Rice is going to be back 10 meters. They're going to run pods here. Looks like that's the end of the that's the end of the minutes, but in rugby, it's very similar to soccer. The play does not stop until the actual play like ends. So until there's a whistle, they're going to keep playing out there. Look, it looks like it's going to be a scrum on the field. Hogan's ball. He's going to be rolling it in for the Crusaders' side. We'll see if they can convert one last time on uh, on this extended play after the minutes have ran out. Hogan rolls the ball in. He passes it out to Gannon, who's going to try and kick it. He tries to kick it over the Fenwick defense and try and run after it. He chases down the receiver, who is brought down by Podlasek. There's going to be a whistle. It appears he was brought down by his jersey, and the, and the official called him on that. It was a very aggressive tackle. Yeah, it looks like Rice is just playing super aggressively. They just can't contain themselves, really. As Fenwick's number 15 breaks through the line, but is brought down once again by his jersey. Fenwick tries to get the ball out, but they're met by Crusaders. So there's another penalty. I'm sorry, whistle. Crusaders are playing with a bit of a chip on their shoulders. Yeah, Rice is doing a good job up front, and they're, they're playing with good form. They're, they're just slightly undisciplined when it comes to penalties. they got to stop making these if, if they're going to want to keep the lead how it is. I think that will be very detrimental over time. As Fenwick takes up the ball. They're met by Crusaders, however. Right around the 45-yard line, Fenwick passes the ball out. It's kicked. Hit, hits Mark Green in the face. He's down on the play. <clears throat> Let's hope the best for Mark Green. Looks like people are on top of him also after the play ended. He's not getting up. Looks like Mark's okay. He's getting up. And that's going to do it at half for 26-12 Brother Rice Crusaders. We will be right back after this short halftime break. Orland, we are Palis. We are Mount Greenwood. We are Evergreen Park. We are Beverly. We are 99th and Pulaski. We are your neighborhood school. We are the essential elements of an Edmund Rice Christian Brother education. We are single gender education. We are hands on learners. We are the new science labs. We are technology in the classroom. We are the King Car Center. We are freshmen forging our own paths. We are seniors ready to take the next step. We are Illinois State Scholars. We are the National Honor Society. We are National Merit Finalists. We are tradition. We are tradition. We are tradition. We, we are brotherhood. We are the best of both worlds. We are family. We, we are family. We are ministry and service. We are peer ministers. We are Edmund Rice Camp. We are the Kairos Retreat. 
We are the Appalachian Service Trip. We are acting manfully in Christ Jesus. We are student athletes. We are the Chicago Catholic League. We are state champions. We are national champions. We are the team. We are the Crusade of Christ. We are the roller coaster. We are competitors on the field and in the classroom. We are involved. We are 35 clubs and activities. The student council. The chess club. The drum club. The camera crew. We are sailors. We are the past. The present. The future. We are the Brother Rice and Mother Macaulay marching band. We are the chocolate chip cookies in the morning. We are Wojo's after school. We are chasing our dreams. We are leaders. We are prepared. We are ready. We are men of Edmund. We are crusaders for life. We are, 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 we are. I think you know, we're just guys sitting in front of a camera talking about sports. I mean, but we do a lot more than just talk about sports. We're athletes in our own right. So Gannon's going to open up the half for the Crusaders. He's going to be kicking it off to the Fenwick Friars here at Tom Mitchell Field. Score is 26-12 with the second half just starting. Fenwick takes the ball up. Looks like another whistle on the field. I think Fenwick's going to try and open up this half and maybe get uh, some better offensive production out of their team that kind of lacked in the first half. Yeah, let's see if they can just gain more yardage. It seems like they've just been at a stalemate all game, just just running into people and not really gaining any any meters. So let's see if they can actually 
progress forward on the field. Possibly their coaches um, gave them a new strategy at the at the halftime talk. We'll see if they can execute a new plan, possibly. More confusion on the field. As Hogan gets set to roll the ball in. Rice wins the scrum and passes it out to Gannon. Gannon takes it up fast. Passes it out to a Crusader who's brought down. Hogan gets the ball back out to number four for the Crusaders. As he's brought down right around the 10 yard line, Hogan passes the ball out back to Gannon as the play is stopped from a whistle. Rice's advantage, Fenwick is gonna be back 10 again. As there's a stalemate right around the right around the try line. Another stop and play as the official blows her whistle. As Hogan taps and goes, he's gonna pass the ball out, and a crusader's gonna get mad at the line. Hogan passes it out to out to Gannon, out to Tavridis. He gets brought down, but he tries to get it off and turns over the ball. Unfortunately. looked like it was going to be a try for Crusaders turned into a turnover. Yeah, that's very unfortunate. However, the Fenwick, after the after Fenwick gained possession of the ball, it appears that they got tackled out of bounds, which will result in Brother Rice's line out, so they'll actually get the ball back, I, 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 I believe. I'm incorrect. It's going to be it's going to be Fenwick scrum. Looks like Brother Rice successfully did not bring the bring the ball carrier out of bounds. Fenwick to nine places the ball in. He passes it out as Fenwick kicks, but it's blocked right around the try zone. Let's see if Rice can get it and tap it down. It looks like Fenwick gets the ball and they tap it down, so they're gonna get the ball back up the field. I believe it's going to be a 22 meter drop kick. Yes, it will be. So they're going to kick from the 22 meter yard line to the Crusaders. Tommy Conlon's going to receive the kick, but he fumbles with it a little bit. But he's just going to kick it right back to the to the Friars, as number six for the Friars receives it and tries to gain yardage on the field. He runs all around and evades a couple Crusaders, but is brought down right around the 35. As Fenwick passes it back out, and he kicks again, but is brought down in Lenane, I think. I'm sorry, not Lenane, but he's brought down. Crusaders number two brings up the ball, and he's brought down. Hogan passes the ball back out to Gannon. Gannon gives a nice boot. Rice cannot receive the kick once again, but Fenwick has the ball, and... Fenwick's runner is still on his feet, but is held up by Crusaders. Fenwick passes the ball out. They're trying to work it along the outside. Looks like they have a disadvantage. or I'm, I'm sorry, an advantage. But they fumble the ball and have to reset. Fenwick's number 14 gets tackled. So what we're seeing right now, I, I believe, is just Fenwick working side to side, not really gaining any any momentum as we saw previously. Do you think Fenwick's just trying to trying to do that what they were doing before, even though it's not working, or do you think they're they're gonna try and do more kicking like we saw previously, or uh, try their big man once again? I think that well, they just went to their big man right there. I think the Crusaders are just that good on the defensive side that they're they're gonna they're gonna have to do what they can to get the ball upfield, but. Probably going to start kicking it soon, I imagine. Yeah, Rice seems to have a pretty tough front line on defense. They're going to try and... Fenwick might try and kick it over that tough front line and, and receive that kick if they chase it down. So Fenwick is going to go with the big guys once again, who's brought who's brought down massively by the Crusaders. But it is going to be a penalty, however. It's actually a penalty in rugby if while you're tackling another player and you and you lift him completely off the ground and, and slam him down like we just saw here, you actually get a yellow card. So looks like Padlasek's gonna be in the in the bin for ten minutes, I believe. So Rice is gonna have to play down one man. We'll see if 
We'll see if Fenwick can convert, seeing that they have an advantage of one player. It appears that Desmond is limping off the field on the shoulder of John Gallagher down there. Was that, uh, was that from earlier in the game? I didn't see anything earlier. He was appearing fine to me, but we'll see what happens. He seems to be walking around, not feeling too good. But Fenwick has the ball currently. They're going to bring it up to the Crusaders as they're brought down. Looks like they get it back out to their backs. So they're going to try and beat him off the edge again. But number two for the Fenwick Friars is brought down by Brian Gannon. Brian Gannon, he's just been showcasing a lot of as it's intercepted. Brother Rice is going to score once again. Jack, Jack Keane was just ready on that play. Yeah, you could see him. He, he just really wanted it. He just bursted through and inter, bursted through that line and just intercepted the ball. It was a very clean play. You, th I think that's just Brother Rice is aggressive and they're showing up once again. Looks like Keane's going to try and kick. It's up, and it is no good. So, guys, it's going to be 31-12 to at Tom Mitchell Field with 27 minutes remaining. The Fenwick Friars are going to be kicking it back off to the to their Brother Ice Crusaders. We'll see if the Crusaders can get another try here. So he's been able to lock them down, not even letting them pass the 35-yard line on the uh, Friars' last rush there. Yeah, Brother Rice is overall doing everything the way they should be. They're just not letting up any meters on defense, just really just really setting that line and not allowing anyone to pass it. And on offense, they're just they're just creating space and kicking the ball all over the all over the Friars. And Friars are kicking it back up after this try. As Hogan receives it, I believe. I'm sorry, that is not Hogan. Hogan passes the ball back out to Gannon. Who passes it down the line to Keen? He's got some room. He passes it to his left. To number 11. He's going to take it up the field. He's got room, but is brought down right before the 30 yard, 30 yard line. Hogan passes it out to Gannon again. Gannon passes it out to number 6 for the Crusaders. Looks like there's a whistle on the field. It appears that there's going to be a scrum right around the right in between the 20 and 15 yard line. I'm sorry, it's going to be a line out for the Fenwick Friars. They're going to be inbounding the ball here as they try and lift up their players and and catch that ball. Friars inbound the ball and receive the ball. Looks like it's on the ground bouncing around, but they recover it. He goes up to kick, but it is almost blocked, so he decides not to. Friars are trying to make something happen with their big, big man there again. But nothing works, and they kick it off again to Mark Green, who receives it, and plows over two players right after each other, and he wants this try really badly. I don't think he got the try, however. I think that was a penalty or something because they don't seem to be rewarding Mark Green for his efforts. So he's once again showing their strength dominance over the Friars on that last play. Mark Green plowed through three people. Yeah, the Crusaders are really just showing off how versatile they are this game. They're kicking all over. They're running all over. They can use their strength um, in the middle of the field, and it's just it's – just, Pretty good play all around for the Crusaders. Looks like there's a discussion on the field as they get ready for the scrum. It's going to be Fenwick's scrum. They're going to roll the ball in. Let's see what the Friars offense has to do.
Looks like there's some confusion on the field as the scrum has not started yet. As the official seems to be talking to the players on the field. Looks like they've got it sorted out, however. They're going to get down and bind up, bind up for the scrum. Fenwick's nine player rolls the ball in and gets the ball back. He passes it out. 15 running around in his own try zone. That's very dangerous. He might convert the ball. Fryer might be down on the play. Yeah, he's a little slow to getting up as there's more confusion on the field. People are just kind of standing around, listening, and waiting for the call from the official. Looks like there's going to be another scrum right around the 5-meter line. As the official is talking to Brother Rice's number 9, Tim Hogan. Crusaders getting ready for this scrum. Hogan rolls the ball in. Looks like Fenwick recovers the ball out of the scrum, however. As Fenwick kicks it, Tommy Conlon's going to be there to receive it, however. He fumbles it, but he gets he recovers the ball and kicks it right back as it's deflected. Fenwick goes down right with the ball, and, and, and they've, they've got 15 running the ball on offense. Looks like he passes it off to another Fenwick player. He's going to bring up the ball. It's their eight man. He, he does not want to go down. He's taken down and passes it out to their five, who's going to bring it up. Once again, using their big man. Number nine for the Fenwick Friars trying to pass it out. <laughs> Number ten for the Friars goes into contact with the Crusaders. He's going to be mad at the line, however. Another big man for the Friars taking up the ball. Number two for the Friars takes the ball, but is brought down. So number 15 is going to pass the ball out for the Fenwick Friars. While another big man for the Friars goes into contact. <laughs> Looks like the Friars have been trying to use their forwards quite a bit. They're big men down in the middle of the field as number four brings it through again. He's being dragged down just by his jersey as he's brought down. It appears to me Fenwick is trying a new strategy with, with all their big guys in the middle of the field. But now they're going to try and work it on the edge as 14 has, has the ball rolling and some room. But there's a whistle on the field. Fenwick finally getting a little spark in their offense. I believe it was a knock call which is where a player trying to catch the ball actually hits the ball forward, causing that to be a penalty, which results in a scrum. We'll see if Hogan can roll that ball in the scrum and get the ball back to get something started for their back line, guys. That's going to hurt, especially when you just get an offensive rush uh, going. Friars definitely did not need this at this point in the game. No, that, that looked like their, their, their chance to um, get a quick try right back and, and get back in this game more, but it got taken away. Looks like another man enters the scrum. I guess he forgot to join in the first place. Hogan rolls the ball into the Crusaders and Friars, but there's going to be a stop and play. <laughs> Looks like the boys on the field just can't quite get this scrum right. Hogan rolls the ball in and as Gannon's ready for the pass. But there's a nice kick by the Crusaders. Fenwick receives it, but is met by two Crusaders. So Fenwick is trying to get the ball out here. Looks like they give it to number five, who is very large, is trying to use the, that big man strategy once again. As there's another stop and play by the official. So Crusaders... Penalty there. It looks like Fenwick, there's a player holding his leg out there. Let's hope he gets up. He appears to be fine. The official is, is talking to 
Crusaders 13, I believe. And he's going to need a substitution. I think he has a bloody nose or a bloody lip. Yeah, that's going to be a blood sub. That In rugby, they try to limit the amount of um, blood that's passed along from player to player, which is, is, very, is a very good thing to do as you don't want other people's blood on you. So let's hope he gets that cleaned up and he goes back in. So Fenwick passes it to number one. He's going to take it up the field and meet a couple Crusaders. He's still on his feet. However, he gets brought down right around the 25. Crusaders actually recover the ball back. Gannon brings it up. He breaks through the line. He's got some room. He's got to beat one guy. He kicks it over his head. Let's see if he can receive it. He does not. Fenwick bat bop. I'm sorry. Bobbles it around. There's going to be a stop and play again. Looks like Podlasek can return from the penalty box after that um, after that illegal tackle call that he had from on him. Is there an average time you spend in the penalty box, or is it does it differ depending on the penalty? Um, I believe a yellow card is a yellow card, which means that every time you get a yellow card, it's going to be ten minutes regardless. But if you do commit a more severe penalty, you will get a red card, which will result in you being um, kicked out of this game, this current game, for the rest of for the time remaining, and then the next game also you cannot par participate in. So looks like Gannon's going to pass it to Donovan as he drops the ball, but recovers it shortly. Hogan kicks the ball in, into the Friars' territory. He's going to chase after it also. Looks like he kicked out of bounds right around the Friars' fr uh, try zone, so Rice is actually going to get that good field position right around the the Friars try zone. Let's see what they can do with it. Fenwick really shot themselves in the foot on that play. Yeah, it looks like Fenwick is getting windows of hope, and then it, it just kind of gets shut by the Crusaders. So it looks like it's going to be a scrum with Hogan rolling the ball in for the Crusaders as the back line, starting with Gannon, gets set out to the left. Hogan rolls the ball in, and he's set to get it from the back. Pes it out to Gannon, who pes it on to Keen, but drops it. Fenwick recovers the ball. And there's another stop in play. Looks like it's going to be Fenwick's penalty. They're going to be back 10 yards, and Hogan's going to pass it on to Gannon, who's going to pass it on to number 11 for the Crusaders. 11 goes down, so Hogan receives the ball and passes it back out to Podlasek, who's going to go into contact right around the right around the try zone, but he stopped. And there's another stop in play. It'll be Crusaders' ball. Number five trying to break through the defensive line right around the try zone. Hogan passes it out to Gannon, who passes it out one more time. Looks like it's going to be a try for the Crusaders. King getting set for the kick for the Crusaders. It is up. And it is good. Fenwick Friars are going to kick it back off to the Crusaders after that try. 
which is going to leave us with a 38 to 12 score for the Crusaders as the Crusaders field the ball with 14:30 remaining in the second half. Hogan passes it out to a Crusader who is brought down. Hogan's going to try and get that ball back out to his line. Looks like it's kicked by the Crusaders. It's rolling right around the 30-yard line as it goes out. It appears to be Fenwick's line out, so Fenwick is going to have the advantage here. They're going to be throwing the ball in bounds to their teammates. Rice, however, does have a chance of catching that ball if they get if they get closer. Number twelve for Fenwick gets set to to throw this line out up. He throws it in, but there's there's going to be another whistle. Looks like that blood sub we saw earlier is going to is going to sub back in. So number 13 is going to go back in for number Hogan rolls the ball into the scrum. Looks like Mark picks it up and goes with it. This big eight man for the Crusaders offloads it back to Hogan, however, who gives it to Gannon. Gannon, he's going to break through the line. He's got some room. Let's see if Fenwick can catch him. Looks like not. He's going to score another try. So Fenwick is going to get set up for this kick back to the Crusaders after the try. With a score at 45-12 to 12 with the Crusaders in the lead with right over 11 minutes remaining in the second half. Fenwick gives it a nice boot. Crusaders field the ball and get met by Fenwick Friars who was brought down. Looks like there's another stop in play. It's going to be Crusaders ball. Hogan tries to get a quick play in before before Fenwick can adjust to the penalty, but looks like he was stopped by the official. So Gannon is going to try and kick it out of bounds here. He succeeds. So the ball is going to be marked right around the 40-yard line. Uh, ten minutes here remaining in in the second half. Uh, what do you think Fenwick's gonna try and do to bring themselves back in this game? You know, at this point, they've we, they've pretty much showed us everything they have in our in their arsenal. But they could just try and power through with their big men once again, or um or use their legs and kick the ball back to the to the brother Rice's defenders because we haven't seen too much of that. So they might be successful with that if they try it. As number two for the Crusaders gets set to throw the ball in. He throws it. 
Number nine passes it out to Smith, who passes it to who keeps it, then passes it to Keen, who takes it up. At Crusaders get a get a gain of about twenty on that on that play. Keen's one of those guys where he doesn't look too big, but when you start uh, trying to show off the muscles with him, he'll definitely beat you. Yeah, he's one of those he's one of those compact guys who just is not the biggest, but he's got pure strength. So look, like it's going to be back time on the on the Fenwick Friars once again. Gannon's going to bring it up, pass it out to number two. Fenwick kicks it out of the ruck. There's going to be a penalty there. Fenwick is back 10 in their own try zone. Hogan's going to try something real quick here. Passes it out to the edge. Hogan passes it back into the middle of the field. Smith passes it before he gets met by some Friars. Crusaders taking some shots on this, this last rush they had. Ooh. Looks like Podlasek got hit in the face as he, as he committed a penalty at the same time. Because it, the ball hit off his head and went forward, which is considered a knock. So it's going to be Fenwick's ball, or I'm sorry, Fenwick's advantage in the scrum. So they're going to get to the, they're going to bit, they're going to get to roll the ball in. Looks like the ball enters the scrum as they're trying to kick it back. Fenwick's 24 receives the ball. Passes out to 15 who kicks it and is deflected by number 6. Tavridis for the Crusaders. Looks like the Crusaders are getting lined up for a kick. It's going to be a 22 meter drop kick. As the Crusader fields the ball, number 11, he's brought down right around the 40 yard line. As the ball is knocked out about knocked out of bounds. Looks like Coach Meany for the Brother Rice Crusaders is a little upset with that with that call by the official as there's some laughter by both parties. Official sorting things out with number 15 for the Friars. Discussing the last play. So Gannon's going to attempt to kick the ball. Gannon kicks it. It's a beauty. And the ball is going to be marked right around the 20-yard line. Six minutes remaining, you'd think the Friars are probably going to play with a sense of urgency. Yeah, that's what you'd think with this, um, with this big lead. Let's hope they can play their best at least and, and, and maybe pull closer at least. So Rice throws the ball into the line out as Hogan passes it out to out to Gannon who passes it out to Keen. Keen's gonna go into top contact but pass it back out to Gannon who passes it once again but it's dropped and received again and recovered again by the Crusaders. So Hogan's gonna pass it back out to Gannon who's gonna pass it back out to Podlasek who's going to meet a host of um, Friars here as he places the ball back for Hogan to get. Looks like they're trying to work the edge here. As number 11 for the Crusaders is ripped down. So it looks like it's going to be the Fenwick Friars ball right around the 40-yard line. They're going to do some pods here and try and power through with their big men. Looks like number 18 for the Friars is brought down at the 30. He's going to try and place the ball, but is is blocked by his teammate. So the Friars are going to be granted the ball once again. Right around the 50-yard line. 
They're going to try and pass it out to their backs and work the edge here. Looks like number 10 for the Friars breaks through the line for the Crusaders. But he's going to be brought down right around the 30-yard line as there is a whistle blown on the field. Friars pass it to number 5. He's going to bring it up and meet the Crusaders at the line. He's going to be brought down right around the 20. Another stop in play. Rice is going to have to back up 10 meters once again. They just keep on committing penalties. Number one for the Friars bringing it up. He's going to get met at the line. The Friars seem to just, just be getting yards purely off penalties as they're just working the ball more sideways than they are vertical. So Pierce, whenever they get something going, they end up turning the ball over to the Crusaders. Crusaders bring the ball up. Brought down right around the 25. Looks like a good, a good tackle by the Friars. As Gannon passes the ball out, who passes it out to Keane. As you stated earlier, I thought it was a penalty if when you tackle somebody and they're lifted in the air, that, that that is a penalty. Yeah, I guess the official didn't see it that time. I guess I guess the Friars got away with it this this time. Hopefully, there's there's no more there's no more of those tackles as as they risk injuring the other player. So looks like it's going to be a scrum right on the 25. So it's going to be a scrum right around the 25-yard line. Fenwick is going to put the ball in. Friars take the ball up. Eight man for the Friars brings the ball up. He breaks through the line, but is brought down, but is held up right around the 20 yard line. Friars are trying to get the ball out with 152 remaining in the in the second half. Looks like the Crusaders caused a turnover. They're going to bring the ball up. Hogan passes it out to Gannon. Gannon into Aubin, who passes it to Podlasek as he's about to be brought down. Podlasek places the ball back for Hogan to receive while he passes it out to Gannon, who passes it out to number two for the Crusaders, who loses the ball, recovered by the Fenwick Friars. Crusaders with a decent lead late in this game, still not giving up on their aggressiveness, playing as hard as they can. Yeah, it looks like Rice is really not taking any chances securing this Catholic League title. They just really want to put this one in the bag, which they appear to be doing so far. So it looks like it's going to be Fenwick's advantage for this scrum. Right at the 45-yard line. With 45 seconds remaining here in the game. The Friars place the ball in the scrum. They're going to kick it back to their 24 player who passes it out. 15 kicks it. It's received by the Crusaders. Not before a knock penalty is going to be called, however. Looks like there's some confusion on the field as the official is talking to both sides. So as the final seconds close out, there's going to be another scrum as the play will continue until the next whistle. 
So the Friars are going to place the ball in, hoping to maybe score before the game, the end of this game as their 8-man brings it up the field and dodges a tackle. He places the ball back, and it's recovered by Mark Green, who takes it up for the Crusaders. He might have room to score yet again, but he's brought down at the 40 and gets right back up and then goes down once again at the 30 after getting 10 more yards. Gannon gets the ball and takes it up. He's met by some Fenwick Friars. Looks like there's going to be a penalty on the Friars. Friars are going to have to move back 10. Crusaders brought down. Hogan passes the ball out to Gannon once again. Gannon to Keen. Keen to Smith. Who passes it out to Tavridis. Who passes it out to O'Shea. Who's brought down right before the try zone. Really impressive passing hands right there. That was... That was a good showcase of how, of, how, of how good hands they have on the edge. Crusaders really gave a dominant effort in this game and really showed. And I think that's what led to their victory at the end of this game. Yep, so the final score here at Tom Mitchell Field is going to be 44-12. to 12. Brother Ice Crusaders, thank you for tuning in.